Take a look at this guy. His name is Gert Hofstede. Gert Hofstede. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his name because it's not an English name. He is a psychologist from the Netherlands. He's a very smart guy and he knows a lot about international things. One of his ideas was to explain the differences between national cultures around the world, right? So every country sort of has a culture that's called a national culture. So why are some national cultures a little bit different? I mean, why do some countries have some values and other countries have different values? You know, why do sometimes conflicts arise when one culture tries to work with another culture? Sometimes there are conflicts, right? For example, if a Japanese businessman tries to do a business deal with an American businessman, sometimes it, it just might not work. There might be some misunderstandings. Both people might get offended. They, there's just a different culture. There's a different set of expectations. Okay, so this is very interesting stuff. Now, he came up with an idea or he came up with something called the six dimensions of national culture. The six dimensions of national culture. Okay, here they are right here. Don't worry if you don't understand what these words mean because I'm going to explain each of them in a few minutes. Okay, now the first thing is a dimension. Do you know what a dimension is? Okay, a dimension is like a part of something or an aspect of something or a way to think about something. For example, here's a cube. Okay, a cube is three-dimensional. That means it has three different dimensions. Okay, whereas a square only has two dimensions, right? Width and height. A cube has width, height, and depth. Depth. Okay, so that's what the word dimension means. So the first of the six cultural dimensions is called power distance. Now this means how much a society values hierarchy. Okay, so hierarchy in the society. Okay, between relationships. How much distance is there between relationships? Okay, for example, in China, your boss is up here and you are down there. You are nothing and your boss is everything. Okay. Whereas in Canada, there's much uh, less power distance. Okay. Look, the distance is not as much. Your boss is here. You are here. Okay. Very interesting. Why does this happen? Well, it happens because societies have certain preferences for things like how much power distance there is in certain relationships like employee employer relationships okay in china it's a lot higher in canada it's not as much okay now hofstede's models uh, are sort of rated each dimension is rated on a scale of 0 to 100 0 being low and 100 being high okay so china scores 80 in this category so they really like power distance whereas canada not so much. It's not really our value. Everyone is, is more equal. Okay, now the next one is individualism versus collectivism. Okay, individual means one person. Collective means like more than one person. Okay, so with individualism, you are responsible for yourself only. Okay, if we have a very extreme mindset toward individualism, that would mean I'm only responsible for myself. I'm not responsible for anyone else. Whereas collectivism means you are responsible for society and society is responsible for you. Okay, it's a nice big happy family, right? So society is more important. Society is more important than the individual. Whereas with individualism, uh, you are the most important. Forget about society. I'm the most important person. Okay, so that's why countries like Asian countries that tend to be very collective, sometimes they think 
You know, countries like Canada or the US are sort of arrogant, selfish, because, you know, it's all about the individual. It's not about society, okay? So this is a, this is a very, very big difference that I've noticed around the world, okay? For example, Canada scores very high in individualism. Everyone is for themselves, right? In the US too and other Western countries, okay? Uh, whereas Korea scores really low in individualism. That means they value collectivism, okay? It's all about society, family, everything is as a group, okay? It's not about just one person. Okay, the next one is masculinity versus femininity. Now, this doesn't really have to do with men and women. This has to do with certain character traits that are usually associated with one of the genders. Okay, for example, uh, men are very often perceived as being competitive, you know, competitive in sports or business. Okay, whereas femininity is, you know, it's, it's more concerned about cooperative, you know, being, being cooperative, getting along. That's why some people think women make better CEOs or, you know, business owners, business leaders, because they're not really concerned about com competing with other people. They, they're trying to get along with other people. Okay, there are lots of female CEOs in Canada and the US and other Western countries. Whereas I'm not sure about China, Japan. If you're from China, Japan, let me know how many women CEOs are there in your country? Okay, um, now men are very often success driven. They want success, that's the most important thing. Whereas women, you know, very often they're more concerned about the quality of life, you know, their family, the well-being of, of something. They're not really too concerned about um, a success, really like money or that kind of thing, okay? Now, men, generally, they need to be the best. Now, these are just generalizations. Not all the time. There are obviously exceptions to anything. These are just very broad generalizations, okay? So very often, men are seen as, as you know, needing to be the best at something, okay? That's sort of seen as a masculine trait. Uh, whereas a feminine trait is more like relaxing, enjoying your work, right? Like having more quality, cooperating with other people. Okay, so these are seen sort of as feminine traits. These are sort of as masculine traits. Now, certain cultures like Asian cultures, Japan, China, Korea, okay, in some sense, they are seen as more masculine. They're very competitive, especially when it comes to like getting good grades in school right? They need to be the best. They need success. You know, they can't accept failure, okay? Canada, on the other hand, you know, it's not as driven for these things. Like, a good example is when I was in high school, okay, I had some classmates from Asian countries like Korea, Japan, China, and they always got top marks in math class, right? They always got an A+. Whereas me, I got a C in math. And I was okay with that. It didn't matter, okay? It's fine. My parents didn't say anything. You know, nobody said anything. I got into college. Everything's fine. I don't really care. Whereas if one of those people, the Japanese, Koreans, Chinese, if they would have gotten a C on a test, that, that would be like the end of the world. The, the world would be coming to an end, okay? So they're very, very driven for success. They need to be the best, okay? So, so some cultures like Japan are a lot more masculine. Cultures like Canada are a lot more feminine. Okay, let's take a look. Canada, 52. Japan, 95. Wow, that means you better not fail a test in Japan. Otherwise, the world is going to come crashing down. Okay, the next one is uncertainty avoidance. Uncertainty avoidance. Now, this has to do with how much uncertainty a culture can accept. Do they, do they try to avoid it altogether? Some cultures really don't like uncertainty, so they try to minimize the risk. Any risk, they try to get rid of it. Okay, whereas other cultures are more accepting of risk. Okay, now think about uh, Canada and Japan. 
Which one do you think is more accepting of risk? I think this is a very um, interesting thing when it comes to immigration. I think that's why Japan doesn't allow immigration, right? If you go to Japan, everyone is Japanese. Japan has like the lowest immigration in the world. They don't like immigration. Why? Because it's, it's too risky. At least maybe this is a theory I have why they might not like immigration because they have a very, the Japanese culture has a very high uncertainty avoidance. That means they avoid all risk, all uncertainty. If they let immigrants into their country, it's really going to increase the risk to their way of life, their traditions, their culture, things might change and they don't want that. Okay, whereas in Canada, Canada's attitude toward immigration is everybody can come here, it doesn't matter, okay? If our culture changes, fine, it doesn't matter, okay? Our culture has changed a lot and it is changing, you know, with more immigrants coming in. Japan would hate that would hate all the risk. What's going to happen? What are these people going to do? You know, to, what are they going to change to our culture? Okay, so people in Japan would like to control the future, right? To, uh, to minimize the risk and to, to, to make sure that the future is predictable, to control it, okay? Whereas Canada is just go with the flow. Go with the flow. That means just accept whatever happens, right? In 20 years, if Canada is completely different, Fine, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, so very different attitudes here with uncertainty avoidance. Okay, let's take a look. Canada 48, Japan 92. Wow, it's a very high score. Okay, the next one is short term versus long term orientation. Orientation means how you view something, what your perspective is. Okay, so short term orientation is concerned with immediate gain immediate results okay for example a lot of diets in north america are just really short term immediate results like lose 20 pounds in a week wow that's great a person loses 20 pounds then they gain all the pounds back okay so very immediate gain so you can tell north america or at least canada and the us you know very short term mindset okay whereas long-term orientation has to do with stability okay very stable right uh the same with something being temporary or being durable durable means it lasts for a long time whereas temporary means it's just very short and then it and then it stops okay so in business this could be a very big difference if two people are trying to work together right for example, a CEO of a company might choose to do something in the company that will make the stock price go up temporarily, just for immediate gains. Whereas someone from Korea or Japan, they would probably sacrifice short-term gains for long-term success, right? They want it to be stable, durable, okay? Short-term people like to spend money long-term people like to save money. Now, I've heard this is one of the problems with the European Union. Countries like Germany like to save money. They have a longer-term orientation. Whereas uh, countries like Greece, uh, they don't like to save as much money. They like to spend money, right? Now, I heard a theory about this once. The theory was Northern European countries like to save money and to sort of have this long-term mentality because it's cold in the winters. They have to save up for the winter, save up food, save up money, okay? Whereas in the Southern European countries like Greece, they don't need to save because, well, I mean, there's food all year round. There's fruit trees and there's, you know, there's there's a supply of food. You don't have to save up money. You don't have to save up firewood to keep your house warm because it's warm all year round in Greece. I don't know if that theory is true, but it's a very interesting theory. Okay, so let's take a look at some scores here. Canada, 36. Korea, 100. Wow! So Korea is very interested in preserving things for a long time, right? Their traditions, you know, long-term success. 
Where is Canada? Let's just give me some immediate gain and then we can forget about the long term. Okay, so the last one uh, in Hofstede's uh, model is called indulgence versus restraint. This sort of has to do with how much you can express your feelings. Okay, how much you can sort of express yourself, right? Release desires. Okay, if you want to do something, how much can you can you say whatever you're thinking? Or do you have to restrain? Do you have to hold back? What does society value? Okay, for example, in Asian societies like Japan, they value restraint. You have to control your desires. Whereas in a lot of Western countries like Canada, it's very much more free to just say whatever you think, do whatever you want, right? If I don't like you, I don't like you. I don't like your shoes. I don't like this weather. I don't, you know, you can just say whatever you want. And you can also, if you're having a good time, if you're happy, yeah, you can celebrate and you can show your emotions. Whereas in a country like Japan, it's much more reserved. Okay, you might not know what someone is thinking, right? They might be very nice, very polite, but inside they might hate you. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so that's a, a big difference. It's called indulgence. Indulge means how much you can enjoy or how much you can take pleasure in something. Okay, so leisure time. This is a big, this is a big one here. Okay, in Western societies, we value lots of leisure time. Time to relax, do whatever we want, right? Whereas in a lot of Asian societies, they work very hard. Okay, for example, when I was in China, um, I always felt bad for Chinese people because Chinese people just work all day every day. Okay? They don't have very much leisure time to just enjoy some hobbies or, or that kind of stuff. Okay, so there's another difference in what a society values, indulgence or restraint. Okay, let's take a look. Canada, 68, right? We value indulgence. We can just do whatever we want to make ourselves happy. Whereas China, it's more restrained, right? Big difference there. Hey, I want you to go to this website. Um, I'll put the link to the specific page down there in the description. I want you to click on that link and I want you to search for your country here in this box. You just type in your country. Okay, so I want you to look up your country and I want you to tell me one thing you would change. What would you change if you could choose? What would you change about your culture? Is there maybe something you don't like? Would you like a certain score to be lower or higher? For example, this is Canada. I'm from Canada, right? Here are all the different dimensions. Power, distance, individualism, masculinity, uncertainty, avoidance, long-term orientation, and indulgence. Okay, so we can see the lowest one here is long-term orientation and the highest one is individualism. Now, to be honest, if I could change one thing about Canada, I would change that one. I would change individualism versus collectivism. Canada is too individualist in their mindset. I think it's better to be a little bit more collective. That's what I would change. I would say Canada should be a little bit more collective care a little bit more about society, have more responsibility towards society. That's just a really nice thing. Anyway, that's what I would change. Let me know what you would do for your country down there in the comments, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.